It's a winner! And good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition here of Show Blitz here with Charles Brad Ritchie as uh, we get ready to get closer uh, to the NFL uh, draft that will be uh, happening uh, this year uh, for the NFL and the National Football League, which will be held in uh, Union Station, uh, Kansas City, right there. Uh, for this year, between April 27th and April uh, 29th. As, of course, we know the Chicago Bears, they own the number one overall pick. Uh, there's still debates going on right now if they'll be able to trade out of that spot uh, more than likely, as uh, GM Ryan Pace has uh, been entertaining that, uh, possibly trying to get uh, multiple picks. They're the number one overall pick. Should they keep it? Uh, we'll find out. Some interesting storylines uh, going on right there. Uh, especially when you got teams like the Colts and Texans who are in this uh, draft right now, uh, both looking for definitely a quarterback uh, needs to fill as you look at it. I mean, I'm not sure if the Texans want to continue on with uh, Matt Ryan overall, but when you look at the whole uh, draft situation right now, a lot of talk has been going in about uh, quarterbacks right now. Because the Houston Texans, they, by winning their final game of the season, they dropped down to the second overall pick. And the Bears, who lost their last game of the regular season, I believe it was to the Minnesota Vikings, they were able to secure the number one overall spot. The Colts are at fourth. And a lot of stuff we'll get into. Plus, we're going to get into the Steelers' uh, draft needs, too. I uh, got a few little entertaining ideas uh, heard from around uh, the local media here in Pittsburgh, especially from uh, 937 The Fan. Uh, we'll get to those in just a moment. But once again, you guys can follow me on social media. You can follow me on Twitter at MetalSteelCGR and on Instagram at MetalSteelNation. So let's dive right into it. Speaking of quarterback news, and uh, there's been a lot of discussion uh, going on right now, too, with one within the division. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson right now, uh, who right now, by the way, is an unrestricted uh, free agent. He played on his, remember, on his fifth-year option uh, last year. Uh, still have not come to fully terms on a guaranteed uh, deal. Now, the question is right now for the Baltimore Ravens, uh, if they're going to tag him, uh, which tag are they going to use on him? The exclusive or the non-exclusive uh, tag, uh, basically, uh, for right now. And uh, we'll, we'll find out. But for right now, there's about a lot of frustration right now. Uh, what what they're going to do with him. Absolutely, Lamar Jackson is definitely very uh, frustrated right now as uh, we look at it. Uh, he does not seem to be like a happy camper. Uh, as you know, he's been like, you know, the top quarterback, especially for this team in a long time, the explosive that he's got, he's won the league MVP. Of course, as we know, he's one in three in the playoffs. But when you look at everything, what well, Lamar Jackson has brought to the table too, and you look at the last uh, two uh, years, I mean, when he's been racking up, I mean, the injuries, to be honest with you, and I think that is definitely more of a concern when you look at everything. I mean, well, Lamar Jackson is great. I mean, for what he's been able to perform with this offense, something that John Harbaugh and company has been building around uh, for this team. But when you look at it, too, I mean, it was definitely uh, concerning right there. He suffered an ankle injury uh, against the Browns in uh, week 14, uh, out for the regular uh, season. Uh, they went winless uh, the rest of the way, and the Ravens were knocked out of the playoffs, too. And then this past year, in Week 13 versus the Broncos, he suffered a sprained PCL when he was sacked uh, by the Broncos' John Cooper. Uh, he was, once again, sidelined uh, for the remainder of the season. This time, uh, five games. Ravens were still good enough to get into the playoffs as a wild card team. Uh, had the ball... I mean, had the Cincinnati Bengals uh, on the ropes, uh, basically, almost pulled off a miraculous upset in the wildcard round since Spike getting their um, butts hand to them 
I mean, in the finale of the regular season, they lost 16-27. They lost this one by a touchdown. But you look at it right there. I mean, Tyler Huntley, I mean, who did a phenomenal job. I thought he did much better uh, filling in for him this year when you look at it. And to be honest with you, I, I, just, I just feel like right now there are some, definitely some clear, obvious uh, frustrations right now. A lot of things are still – on pause. It feels like uh, purgatory right now. I mean, what's going to happen as far as is he going to get his big money deal that he's looking for? I mean, with this team, I mean, a lot of people are speculating that he is going to get paid, but who's going to be the one that allows to do it? I mean, we'll see. But, I mean, for the most part, when you look at Lamar Jackson, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, I mean, let's uh, take a look at his overall uh, production, what he's contributed to the black and purple uh, from joining this team uh, being selected here. I mean, when, when you look at a guy like Lamar Jackson, who's taken with the last pick in the 2018 uh, draft, they're able to uh, tr trade into right there, the 32nd overall pick. And you look at his career right now. I mean, overall, I mean, he is uh, 61 and uh, 45. You know, as no, excuse me, forty-five and sixteen as a starter, and for everything that he's just uh, been contributing uh, mightily here. I mean, uh, for the most part, I mean he's uh, complete about like sixty-four percent of his passes. I mean, uh, well respectable, uh, hundred and one touchdowns of thirty-eight interceptions in his career. I mean, passing wise, I mean, yards per game, uh, he is averaging about 174, still so somewhat of a game manager, despite using his legs. But, I mean, when you look at it, too, I mean, for what he's done, now, there's still a lot of conflicting reports going on because a lot of people who've been following him were expecting he's looking for like a fully guaranteed deal, what Deshaun Watson has uh, gotten with the Browns. Uh, I mean, uh, here at the top uh, right now, as it stands, the following quarterbacks uh, who's got the most uh, money guaranteed at sign, it is Deshaun Watson with the Browns at $230 million, followed by the Cardinals, Kyler Murray at $189.5. Now, remember, Deshaun Watson is fully guaranteed. Next, you got the Broncos, uh, Russell Wilson, $161 million, followed by uh, the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers at $150.815 million. And then uh, the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, $150 million. Patrick Mahomes of the Chiefs, over $141.5 million. Rams, Matthew Stafford, one hundred thirty. million. Cowboys, Dak Prescott, $126 million. Lions, Jared Goff, over $110 million. And last but not least, the Colts, Matt Ryan, at $100 million right now. Now, here's the thing right now. The tags uh, that they could use. Now, the pricier one would be the exclusive tag. Now, remember, that's projected to be around $45.2 million right now. Now, the key thing is with that, uh, for people who have been paying attention or just wanting to find out, remember, that tag right there, he cannot negotiate with any teams. I mean, if they use the exclusive tag, I mean, he basically uh, keep them around from, like, uh, hitting free HC regardless. Either tag he use. And you don't have to worry about teams uh, swooping in. And then, because the reason why the exclusive tag may sound a little more favorable than the non-exclusive, the non-exclusive, now remember, too, that one right there, uh, teams can negotiate with Lamar Jackson, and the Baltimore Ravens would have an opportunity to match or up the offer. I mean, if they say no, they get two first-round picks, uh, sent to them uh, by that team, uh, basically. And as we look at it, so, I mean, when we look at it right there, I mean, for everything, what we have right now, so they, uh, the Broncos surrendered two first-round picks uh, for 2022, the, the ninth, and 2020, so they surrendered uh, two two first round picks for 2022 
and uh, 2023. So it was ninth overall in 2022. And then uh, the fifth overall pick in this year's draft, uh, which be for 2023. In addition, they also gave two second round picks, the 40th overall in 2022. And then uh, for this year uh, with the Denver uh, Broncos, the Seattle Seahawks get the 38th. So again, Remember, it, so for uh, this year's draft, uh, for the first round pick, they get uh, this year's uh, fifth round pick. I mean, the, the excuse me, the number fifth overall pick in the first round, and then the thirty eighth overall pick in the second round. So two first and two second round uh, picks uh, that the Seattle Seahawks were able uh, to get. And of course, as you remember too, I mean, with the Seattle Seahawks, I mean, did a real good job with uh, Geno Smith, who had a little bit of a reborn uh, year, to say the least. I mean, and when you look at everything with the private workout trainer that uh, Russell Wilson has been able to do, uh, having out his own game plans, I mean, and, like, working with his teammates, seemed to be a little bit too much empowered. But, I mean, at the same time, too, I feel like uh, he – Felt himself as like clearly a top runner for former uh, MVP voting, which very respectable. But I mean, at the end of the day, too, I think that's what the Ravens got to be paying attention to because if they do that. They're they got to be thinking Lamar Jackson's got to be more worth than just two first round picks. I mean, I like the idea of the non exclusive because it's a little bit cheaper, thirty two point four million. Regardless, each one is a hundred. I mean, it's a one year tender. Now the main difference is right now too, uh, the ex the difference between the exclusive and the non-exclusive, uh, right now, uh, they're each an offer to a player for no less than the average of the top five top five salaries at the player's position. The exclusive, uh, is for the current year, while the non-exclusive is for the five pre previous uh years. Right there. So that's what we got to look at right there. And remember, Stephen A. Smith did say on first take about a couple of weeks ago that Lamar Jackson and his camp spoke to him saying that he's never asked for a fully guaranteed deal. The number that the Ravens stopped was at $133 million guarantee, which in his mind, and a lot of people who were in favor of Lamar Jackson was pretty much lowballing. The thing is, too, I mean, Josie Harris was even saying last week too that he he doesn't have to have more than 230 million guaranteed. He's looking at that to be the very minimum to start with to have at least guaranteed starting. Now he does want to have more. So for example, he could have something like say 250 million dollars uh grand total in the overall uh money he'd be earning. But he can have, like, say, maybe 230 or 240 million of that guaranteed, for example. So even though maybe 10 or 20 won't be guaranteed, he'd still at least, like, get, like, the Sean Washer, maybe a dollar or a couple millions more than he got. And I'm going to be honest with you right now. Lamar Jackson, listen, at the end of the day, I mean, when you look at, I mean, like, uh, postseason wise, what he's been able to do. I mean, when you look at it, I mean, he's one and three in the postseason. I mean, only 13 points a game. Uh, they've been outscored by 29 points, 52 to 81 in the playoffs. His uh, completion percentage has uh, dropped to about 56% versus 64% in the regular season. So it's an 8% uh, difference right there. But when you consider, like I said, the ankle injury and then, of course, the PCL injury in the last two years, I'm going to tell you right now, I think he's got a three, five-year window to prove that he could lead a team to a Super Bowl. Now, some of the destinations we're talking about is like uh, the Miami Dolphins, which would be a huge one right there because uh, right there, too, I mean, he is from Florida. He was born, uh, let's see, and uh, – Botton Beach, uh, Florida, right there. And the Miami Dolphins have not had a quarterback since a uh, significant since Dan Marino. 
Now, of course, you have Tua Tagovailoa, whose career may be in serious uh, jeopardy right now. But I think, if anything, I think it's time with the Ravens might be coming to an end. But I'm going to tell you right now, once again, as I told many people, I'm not sure if I want to guarantee more than $230 million guaranteed. I think a fair offer, I mean, when you look at the contracts that we just read out right there, I think if anything, I mean, you could give him $230 million total, but like maybe say two hundred and fifteen of that is guaranteed. I would do something like that. But I mean, at the end of the day, too, I mean, it's inevitable that quarterbacks are going to start going up. He's doing this without an agent. And the only conclusion I could draw right now, him not having an agent involved, of course, I mean, the legal fees, they got to pay with them, their profit they got to get. But I just get the sense right there, I mean, him dealing with his mom, people close to him, who seem to be very smart in their minds, and I hope everything works out. But... Are their agents going to screw them over? That's why I feel like the concern is with Lamar Jackson. I feel Lamar Jackson feels like, you know, like he, he probably seen like a lot of players who had agents. They probably end up like uh, not getting anything they want. So the question I want to pose to everybody right now, would you pay this man once again? I mean, if we're talking about, I mean, for a, T guy that could lead your team to the Super Bowl, keep Super Bowl contention beyond just the playoffs. Would you or would you not pay Lamar Jackson over two hundred thirty million dollars? I would not, only because of the injuries right there. I mean, yes, players need to have their uh, long term security; they need to be uh, covered. I mean, for long term, but at the same time, too. Yeah, look, if he's not going to be, I have a feeling he's going to keep breaking down more in time. Like I said, I give him minimum three years left of his peak. Three years, because he's already played five seasons right there. So I give him three to five seasons, three being his peak years. He's got left to strike right now to prove that he can find a way to turn on the playoffs and then uh, lead his team deep, possibly for a Super Bowl run, if not a Super Bowl champion. So I'm going to say no, unfortunately. And not because I want him out of the AFC North, but I, I just, I, I'm just, I'm always tend to believe her. I like quarterbacks who extend plays, do bootlegs and naked bootlegs, kind of like what Ben Rosberg did earlier in his career. I mean, where he was able to extend plays. That's the mobility I want. I don't mind running every now and then, but at the end of the day, when you are running, you're taking a big risk. Yes, you're going to avoid probably getting sacked less, but you're going to still be hit. And the more times you get hit, it's kind of like taking like a good car you have. You're tr treating it like a, being like a speed demon on the road on the expressway. But then once you get into that little car accident, that one little bump, each little nick, 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 you start to like lose your value right there. So for me, that's all I'm going to say on that. So we're going to go ahead and pivot uh, from that point. This is Charles Prides Ritchie here of Show Blitz. Thank you for watching the Mass Steel Podcast with your host, Charles Prides Ritchie, here on YouTube. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for all the latest Mass Steel Podcast episodes, feel free to download them on Mixcloud, Anchor.fm, and SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts.